Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So we're going to be starting a series uh, for how to create custom villages. And as you can see here, we have a custom village that I created. Spent a lot of time actually working on these structures and setting up all this stuff and, you know, figuring all this stuff out. But um, I'll try to explain the Jigsaw stuff today and then I'll be working on, you know, some JSON scripts so you guys can, you know, figure out how to debug your workspaces because there's you will have to be working in a little bit of JSON uh, script in order to get these things working. It works for data packs as well as for mods. So it because mods are basically data packs, pretty much they will be cross compatible. And I have even uh, been working on my own mod that uses custom generation like this, but for mine shafts. So it is possible. Um, as you can see here, this is a pretty hard example of it generating um, because um, it's on a cliffside. Um, in some cases, things are a lot smoother in generation. Uh, this is actually one of the nice little features I wanted to show because um, it kind of creates like a little plateau area and it looks really cool and stuff. So I'm sure you could figure out, you know, maybe a way to get it to spawn in more rough terrain like these kinds of areas and then have you know villages and stuff generate like this so this is another example of it generating so as you can see this is on the better case of scenario when it's actually generating and stuff it will generate a random city center which is basically this thing that i've created here there's multiple different types that i've created i put some fish in this one and then it will start branching out the paths and then the paths will eventually just branch out to the houses and there's little props and stuff like these uh, which are considered decorations. So basically with processors and stuff like that, uh, like processor list, you'll be able to randomize those pretty much, but um, that's kind of more advanced stuff. If you want me to cover that in a future video, I can always expand the series and explain how the processors work. But you can just basically use this for a village or you can branch out and do your own thing like I've been doing with the mineshaft. I've basically just been playing around with it. There's other things that you can do. There's underground structures and stuff that you can also do. So uh, here's another example of one generating. There's a few other structures up there. And as you can see, it really is nice when it's lit up at night as well. So uh, this this data pack that I'm going to be providing will be uh, available and you guys will be able to use it as a template and everything like that, of course, with the structures and everything like that. So, and the final example is over here. So uh, kind of like a more of a hilly thing. Some of the structures spawn kind of like a plateau kind of thing underneath. That's normal generation for them. If it's over air uh, to an extent or water or something like that, then it'll generate that. Now there are a few things with the paths. Like, for example, this is called a Terminator. Mm -hmm. I can't really see what it's doing. But There's other parts in here that you will probably be able to take a look at. Okay, so here's a couple examples of Terminators. Basically, when it goes to an end of a path, if nothing has basically generated, then it'll basically try to generate something from another pool. So in this case, uh, it's called a Terminator. Those are basically the end things in villages. There's actually quite a few of them around here. So this is a Terminator. Uh, this is basically these three blocks here, and then that one, or possibly just that one. And then this is also a terminator right in this little section right here. That's also an end piece. Let's go into my test world for building and then we'll go ahead and I'll explain jigsaw blocks finally. So we actually have a lot of components to make up a village and it's going to be that way when you're actually creating your own structures and stuff. You're going to have your houses which are in the back row there and then you're going to have your paths over there and then you're going to have all your decor items which are basically in these spots here. So there's tons of different components components. Uh, that's the main centerpiece for the village that I created. Uh, basically, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on here. There is basically decor. So basically, these are the small plants. There's a chance that these small plants will generate in these corners. And then there is the main centerpiece, which are the big fountains, different decor parts over here. So these four things. And with these two here, what I'm basically doing is I'm basically um, creating mon monument trees, which are these two trees here. So it has a random chance to choose between one of those two trees. Well, these uh, branch off to different paths. So this one's called streets. And then we basically uh, expand four directions from this particular one, and then we'll create the streets. So there's a couple different combinations with the structure blocks. Um, 
this would probably be a good time to explain how they work. When you want to generate a particular street, what you need to do is you need to add your pool, add nothing, so you basically want to select all and then delete it. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you give it a name that you're going to use for that particular um, testing thing. So basically the name and the, the target name need to be the same for it to know that it needs to connect to that particular part. Um, so basically, as you see here, this is basically going to be a street. I'm just going to save that and you can see that this updates to Minecraft um, colon, which is basically just saying that it's an empty thing. It's not going to be used. Um, then we can set what block it's going to turn into. So basically you can set your own mod. You would put your namespace and then your mod um, block registry and then it'll turn into that particular block. So in this case, I'm just turning it into air. So if I wanted to do it into cobblestone, I would go cobble and then it would basically update to the block to cobblestone. But I don't want to do that because that would put a cobblestone block there after it's attempted to generate. <laughs> All right. So basically just remember that the, um, the pool is called streets and the, the actual generation target name is street. So basically from there, what it can do is it can generate any one of these uh, particular parts uh, which have its own um, ins and outs. So basically this one is the in direction for where that block or any other block that it's connecting to is going to look for. Now it's this is the name. You don't need the target pool. Actually, if you add the target pool, it'll be a worse generation than if you were to just leave these two things blank. Uh, this is due to it basically looking for a block and it basically generating a block. So uh, the looking one is basically this one here and the generation one again uses the opposite two slots. So target name and target pool where the the one that it's going to be selecting from is just the name. So the other two need to be empty. All right. So at the end here, what we have is we have the streets. Again, we're generating another path or at least attempting to. And what's going to happen if this can't generate is it's going to select a random thing, if it can, from the terminator, which are these little blocks here. So we have that little um, one that's basically the end piece that we saw there. There. We have another one that's like this and we have the other one that I showed right here So it's going to basically try to attempt to generate one of those as well if there's room uh, Some other things that you might need to know that There's other things that you can do with them Like you can generate anything that you want Like if you wanted to generate a house here, you could generate a house uh, This one's just called path decor But um, basically these are going to be generating a couple different parts like these These are the little path decor ones that are created This one's going to spawn the entities which are saved like this uh, there's some air blocks in here and basically what it's going to do is it's going to randomly select one from the animals pen group and it's going to select animals and then it's going to put it into this particular pen here so that's basically how that works sometimes they won't generate if there is like in some cases if there's not enough room like where this boundary is that's where the amount of space that that particular structure is going to take up right so if it's not enough room to actually generate that structure like say um that little pile there uh there was something obstructing it at the second level right here then it won't generate in that space because it won't uh, override the blocks but it will try to make an attempt but if there's something in the way it won't do it at least that's what i found while i was testing and there's a whole bunch of other stuff like for example that um thing here uh we have jigsaw blocks in here that create ceramics which uh do a whole bunch of other stuff from the ceramic pool which is over here so those are all the different ceramics that can basically have a random chance of generating in that particular thing now you can always make a permanent generation there's different lines of uh, JSON code that will allow you to do that. But um, yeah. so you're gonna need a jigsaw block. So what you wanna do is you wanna give yourself um, at all or at P, whatever you wanna do. And then you wanna type jigsaw and jigsaw and then you will get your jigsaw block there uh, you also need a structure block so if you're not familiar with those I have covered tree tutorials that will um, 
help you kind of understand a little bit how those work. So the structure blocks are really important. Uh, not much has changed too much since I did those tutorials. Like they're pretty similar. You can test with corners and stuff. I haven't covered that, but um, there's not. it's not too complicated to do. I'll cover that quickly as well. So basically what you want to do is you want to figure out where you're going to be spawning things. Now, for your starting structure, you don't actually need a jigsaw block to spawn this. Uh, you're going to have a starting pool instead, which is basically going to generate uh, this whole structure first on, and then it's going to add the components later on, which basically will generate the chain of events that will expand out until it reaches its maximum number. Now, the maximum number at the moment is either six or seven. I can't remember how many times. Let's check a look at the jigsaw block. So I think it's seven that it can go out to maximum. They'll be expanding this to 20 in the next Minecraft release. So I think it's like 1.21 or something. I can't remember the exact version. It might be 1.22. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to allow it to go even further in distance from the center. So just keep that in mind when you're actually doing it. Now, if you wanted to actually generate it, you would basically do that. But because we're in a data pack, we're not actually going to be able to do that. So. Great let's go ahead and start building uh, we can basically whenever you place it on a block face it's going to be facing that direction this little line here indicates what direction it's actually facing in rotation so we can tell it to be aligned what that's going to do is it's going to make sure that it's not going to rotate around like this uh, blocks that are on the face like that you'll see that this little line indicates what direction it's facing the arrows also point towards the direction that you want to connect to and you want the other block to be very similar to like this so it wants to basically connect to where the puzzle piece is to that puzzle piece and these lines need to be connected so if this is uh basically the ones down here don't have rotation like aligned direction because they're already aligned with a certain rotation like this where this one, it's on a um, side face, so it, you can make it aligned, which means it will always make sure that these two parts are aligned like this, uh, but upside down. So basically, like that. So it will generate exactly like this. If this block is rotated like this, then this will also rotate and the lines will match up. But if not, then it's going to rotate randomly around that particular part, which in some cases you might need to generate it in a certain way for your structure that you want it to, to face a certain direction. Uh, that's where you use the aligned and the down face, and that will be very important for your generation. All right, so now say you want to save your structures. We're going to use the structure block and we're going to go ahead and locate the corner that we need to basically set it on. Now, if you look at the F3 screen, you can see there's a little axis in the center of the screen there. It's red, blue, and green. We want to make sure that our structure block is on that side underneath our structure. So, once we've done that, what we can do is we can place another block, uh, structure block, on the top here. And what you can do is you can go ahead and go into corner mode. And we're just going to set a number here just for a really quick reference. And then we're going to go to save mode and we're going to set that number. And we're going to detect. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically go from this corner of the block, bottom corner there, to the top corner of the block right here and it's going to select the whole thing so we don't need to play around with coordinates i recently found out that you can do it that way and it's way easier to size things up so um it'll already do all the relative positions and stuff like that so now if you want entities to spawn in here what you want to do is you want to make sure that it will um that will detect it you can show invisible blocks that won't actually do anything. I have an example over here that you can kind of see. These are basically structure voids, and if I break it, it's a air block. Um, cave air doesn't have its own color. Uh, cave air can be used for generating basements, which um, I have actually done in this particular structure here. Now, if you generate it on the surface, it's not going to... Uh, it's going to fill all this stuff in. Uh, that's air so what you have to do is you have to fill it in with cave air and what it will do is it will make sure that it's empty and 
walkable when you actually generate in that area. A nice little hack that you can generate a structure with. All right, so back to this. If you want entities to be included, maybe you want villagers um, or your custom entities for villagers or something like that, like trader entity or something like that that you want to generate in the, build in the village. Uh, what you can do is you can make sure that this is on. So make sure it's on and then click done and then save it. So in that case, I'm doing that with the pigs, um, pigs over here. And you can see that entities are on. So I'm doing that for the villagers as well because they're entities. Now, in some things like minecarts, those are also entities. You would want to make sure those are saved. And the fish are also in the same method. So once you've done that, it will basically, um, you can save it. And then when you're, you want to make sure that you give it a name first, I suggest putting it under the same name space. So test, and then you want to go and call it something. So we'll call it um, one. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually save this. We're in M Creator right now, so we can get to our save folder a little bit easier. So we're going to save and it's going to say that it has been your structure saved as test one. So test is the namespace in the generated folder and that's the name of the structure. So we're going to go into M Creator quickly and go to uh, our workspace folder and then we're going to go to the run folder and then inside the run folder we can go to our save folder and then I have my world here. It's really important to name your world something that you will understand for your development because it's a pain to actually try to find it in all these new folder or new world things. So after you've got into your world folder, you can go down to your generated folder. You'll have this after you save a file uh, structure. And then we have our test folder, which we specified. And then structures is in it. This is basically what you want to put in your data pack or um, when you're setting up your structure and your files, then you're going to be setting the structures there. And this is our actual structure name that we created. So that's that little pane that we created. All right, so there is just a couple other things. Well, one last thing that I should probably cover, and that is how to use uh, loot tables uh, for your custom namespace. Uh, this can be done using mCreator. Uh, you can set up the loot tables using their application and then copy the loot tables into your data pack, or you can use it for your mod as well. So uh, in these cases, I have a couple different uh, loot tables here. Uh, they're under a few different paths. Now we're going to quickly just open up the uh, custom village thing and I'll show you where they're stored. So for example, if we go into the data pack files and then we have the data folder, test is our namespace and then we have loot tables. So in loot tables, we have a folder called chest. That's going to be, so loot tables is our main directory and then any folder inside of that we need to specify. So in this case, chests, and that's where our particular loot tables are stored. So when we open up the particular uh, system, we're gonna notice a few things. We know that it's on the mod namespace. So that basically means that it's going to be generating under our mod namespace, which means our data pack namespace, whatever we decide to call it. Now, if we go ahead and go into our workspace settings, we can see our mod name stays is called test. So we're going to be basically putting it under test and then the path for the registry. So the registry is basically where we're going to be targeting the file. We are going to be saying, okay, this needs to be in the chests folder. And then that slash basically says, okay, that's that folder is over. And then we're going to be specifying either another folder with another slash after it and then the file or whatever. And we can continue doing that until we get to our file, or we can just basically specify what our loot table name is called. So this will basically allow you to separate your loot tables a little bit more for different types of structures and stuff. In this case, I just have a really simple setup calling it chests and then setting the um, the actual namespace to armorer bedrooms. That's basically just where I'm storing the, the chest in that particular structure. Keep that in mind when you're actually generating it. So when you're generating your loot table, it's going to be tests colon, that will be the namespace part, and then chests because that's the folder that the loot table's in slash and then we want to set the loot table name so in this case it's armor bedroom and then you can set up how your loot table wants to generate however you want so I have just like a few different ones set up like that right, so we're in game now and I have a specific village that I generated here uh, using commands that's why there's a couple of them next by next to the project
project that I've been working on. But uh, what we have here is basically a chest that has not been opened yet. We can actually use the data command, just data, and then we can get the data from that particular block. And we're going to set the coordinates of that block so we can tell what it is. And we're just going to basically check the data of how this particular thing's set up. Now, what we can look at is we see that there is a our data tag right here. So right where this curly bracket is to where this ending curly bracket is, is all the data inside this particular thing. You might notice that there is loot table um, seed. I don't know what that's actually for. That could be anything. You don't actually need that to generate a loot table. You just need the loot table uh, with cap capital L and a capital T, everything else lowercase, and then the two colons or the, the colon, and then you want to specify a string. So a string is basically when you put a quote, a double quote, and an ending quote. So that's basically what we're going to be putting in here. And then you want to make sure that the loot table is set up for the namespace that you want to get it from. So in this case, um, this one's from the Minecraft namespace, which is Minecrafts, and then the colon uh, tells the game that it's going to be, uh, that's the namespace, and then there is the chests. So the chest folder, and then they've specified another folder, which is called village, and then they've basically did another slash, and then finally the uh, loot table name is called village underscore planes underscore house. So we can do this with our own loot tables as well, so we can go ahead and um, set up the loot table so we're going to go with data and then we're going to go with merge so merge will allow us to edit the data for that block now if we look in the chest right now there's nothing in the chest so data merge block and then we're going to set the coordinates of that block okay so once you have the coordinates after that you're going to need your curly brackets this will tell it that this is the mbt that you want to insert and then what from from there what you need to do is you need to add a loot table so loot and then table exactly like that and then you want your colon after that you need your quotes so you'll see this change color to yellow when it's actually set up properly and then inside these quotes what you want to do is you want to go with your namespace so in this case I want test colon so again this will specify let the game know okay this is under the test namespace your namespace is going to be a little bit different uh, for your data pack or your mod, depending on how you have it set up. And then what you need is basically the folder structure that it's set up in. So in my case, I'm going to do a loot table from the chests. And then I'm going to quickly look up the loot table path, the registry that we explained earlier. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set chests forward slash and then armorer underscore bedroom. So that's the loot table that I know in game. Uh, what I would do is armorer bed room. And that should generate the loot table. So if we open it, we got our loot table generated. Now, if you were to basically save the structure right now, that's going to be the same loot because we already opened it. So if we open up the block, you can see that. So as you can see here, the there is no loot table anymore in the thing. We'll just clear this and then do that again so it's a little bit easier to see. So you can see that there's absolutely no loot table uh, attached to this uh, block anymore. So as soon as you open it, what happens is it will remove the loot table and it'll just keep the items. So if you want to do it, make sure that you set the loot table and then not open the this particular chest until after you save the block of the structure it's best to just basically not have the structure or the chest open um i wouldn't go as far as saving the putting a sign next to it saying don't open but um that was just for me to make sure that i, I kept the loot table there for the example so hopefully that makes sense when you can you can set your own structures and stuff like that you can do it with command blocks and other things too but i find the the data merge and then setting up your loot table and stuff like that like below is like the far easiest way to do it um hopefully they won't change that in the future but you know 
basically that's how it's done. Outside of that, what we'll be covering next week is how to basically configure uh, or debug uh, the uh, JSON file. I'll cover pretty much everything I know about JSON files and hopefully give you guys a good head start on debugging your projects because uh, during working on this particular project, I ran into errors myself and it's just a common thing that will happen even with the most experienced people uh, that know the how the structure like the language is actually formatted and stuff so I'll it's best to kind of explain how to debug that so you guys can understand how to find the location of where the files are messed up and basically how certain things can be fixed so we'll be covering that next episode followed by um, the actual generation of the files um, th themselves I'll be covering how to set them up specifically what the different parts in the the example work uh, how they work and stuff like that and then again if you guys want a future tutorial on a processor list I can do that as an extension after I've gotten through some of the regular advanced tutorials that you guys requested so I can do that in a future video outside of that if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out